Well, greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome to, depending on wherever you may live, or however you decide to read your clock this early morning or middle of the night bonus upload. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe, it does not cost a cent. Click that like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yeah, they really do matter. Now everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into this early morning or middle of the night bonus upload, shall we? Today's first encounter. I live on 180 acres in Midwest Oklahoma. I'm 14 years old and I've lived on this farm my entire life. On our farm, we have a large pond and surrounded by some woods. This wooded part is covered in thick undergrowth with large oak trees that block off the moonlight at night. I go out to the pond at night sometimes to do some fishing. I'm always armed when I go, either my Maverick 88 shotgun or my 22 revolver. This one night, it was kind of foggy, and my high-powered headlamp would only allow me to see about 20 feet or so through the fog. This particular night, I was carrying my revolver when I headed down to the pond to go fishing with my fishing pole and a bucket of frogs for bait. When I got to my normal spot where I fish, I noticed it was very quiet, almost silent. There were no frogs croaking, no crickets chirping. This was very unusual, but I ignored it like an idiot. After fishing for about an hour or so with no luck, I started to hear some noises off in the thick part of the woods. Normally, this wouldn't bother me, but it was the only sound in the entire area. I turned, and what I saw will forever haunt me. When I turned, I saw a black, wolf-like animal staring at me through the leaves. I froze, but quickly went into instinct mode and drew my revolver, knowing it was my only chance. But then something happened that is still burned into my memory. This creature stood upright on two legs and towered above me. It was only about ten feet away from me, and probably eight and a half feet tall. Its eyes glowed like fire, and I felt the weight of my pistol in my hands, and did what I was trained to do. I fired a single shot and put it right in the A-box of this creature. Now I know that's probably the stupidest thing I could have done, but I believe it saved my life. Because I couldn't outrun this thing and I couldn't fight it, so might as well shoot it, right? Though this thing seemed invincible, it was like all things were mortal. And when the round hit it, it howled and went on all fours and ran with an unimaginable speed out of my sight before I could pull another round. I had to walk all the way back home in the dark, but I kept my pistol raised and kept my head on a swivel until I could see the lights from my house. Though this did scare me, it didn't keep me from doing the things that I love to do. So it's no wonder that I've seen it more than once, even though the second time was a bit more in my favor. I was walking a trail in part of the woods with my Maverick 12 gauge. It was a very clear night, so I could see a pretty good distance with my light. As I was walking, I could hear more steps than I was taking, but when I stopped, they stopped. Of course, now I've had my encounters with the coyotes that roam our area, so I thought it was just that and pumped my shotgun and shouldered it. After a while, I came to a small clearing in the back of my property, and I could still hear the footfalls behind me, so I whipped around. 
And that's when I saw it again, those eyes that could see straight through you, right to your soul. I raised the shotgun, but this time it knew what I was doing and took off with such speed. With slugs instead of double-out buck, I couldn't hit it. I haven't seen it since, and I hope I never do. The only bad thing about this creature is that people have gone missing in my area, never to be found. Guys, if you ever go into the woods, especially at night, take in your surroundings. And if you have a firearm, use it, because it can't save you while it's in your holster. Always try to bring someone with you. Be safe. And remember, you don't have to believe in these things for them to kill you. Today's Second Encounter I'm still 18 years old, so this wasn't that long ago. I was nervous to share this, but my friends and I that were with me during this encounter encouraged me to share it. So this is our encounter with the dog man in Talandega National Forest. I live in Alabama, and it was a few weeks before my 18th birthday, and being the nature lover that I am, my friends Aiden and Maggie invited me to go to Talandega Forest for an early birthday present, and of course I said yeah. My friends and I are very outdoorsy. I met them at the park we always meet at for our midday adventures. We hopped in Aiden's truck and began our drive for what seemed like forever. When we got to the campgrounds, everything was normal, people chatting and laughing. We had found our camping space away from all the other people since Aiden, Maggie, and myself are not really sociable people. Maggie and I made the tent up since we all decided we were going to sleep in the same tent while Aiden went and looked for firewood. After the day had gone by and everything seemed normal, we put out the fire and nodded off. The following morning we had gone for some fish, but something seemed slightly off. There was no sound, no frogs, nothing. I have high paranoia. Aiden knew this, and him being a jerk decided he would have fun and screw with my paranoia. He told us that he'd be back and he'd go get some snacks. We continued fishing, catching very little, just a couple brem and some catfish. Maggie got worried because Aiden had taken a little while. Leaving me alone, my paranoia started to set in. Aiden had jumped out of the brush a few feet from me, shrieking. I called him an ass and got up to leave. Maggie caught up to me, walking back to our campsite, asking what's wrong. I glared at her and nodded my head to where we were fishing, and she laughed. It didn't help but feel that she was in on it, too, so I ran back to the tent and sat in there. So much for a birthday present, right? When they got back, the sun had already been setting, and I was playing games on my phone. Aiden apologized for scaring me and tossed me a bag of chips. We cooked and ate what we caught and nodded off another remotely normal day. The following morning is when it got weird. We opened our tent to our campsite being destroyed. Our packs were shredded, our cooler knocked over, and what looked like claw marks. I wondered how we slept through this. Aiden suggested maybe it was a black bear, but Maggie protested and said if it were hungry, it would have targeted the tent as well. We shrugged it off and started for our hike for the day. Strangely, there were no sounds, nothing, not even birds. Maggie suddenly gasped and started walking away. Quickly, Aiden looked over and tried to shield what Maggie had seen from me. I pushed him aside and froze, a freshly killed deer. It had gashes on its neck and its stomach had been tore open. Aiden pulled me away and we started heading towards camp. I had been silent the whole time, Aiden holding my wrist, knowing how I am when I'm in shock. I finally shouted out, That poor deer, what the hell could have done that? Maggie looked back at me and suggested bear. Quickly, Aiden denied, Bears don't leave a meal like that. We got back to our campsite and for the rest of the day sat puzzled and sick. Maggie and Aiden were arguing outside for hours about what we had seen. They returned to the tent looking at me while I was still in shock. Aiden suggested we go to sleep. I didn't sleep. I just sat in my sleeping bag listening to the sounds. But there were no sounds. Not even the wind. Suddenly a loud howl broke the silence. It shook me. I held my breath listening and again but louder and more angry. I could hear it walking through the woods around us. 
Aiden touched my shoulder and I jumped and he shushed me. He was looking at the side of the tent and I noticed what he was looking at. A shadow that I could only describe as Professor Lupine's movement in Harry Potter. We peeked out the tent flap a little and we saw it. A massive black wolf-like creature not far from our tent. Maggie woke up and shouted loudly, Why the hell are you making so much noise? Aiden quickly grabbed her mouth, but it was too late. The werewolf, as I'm going to call it, heard her and was making its way towards our tent. We could now hear it barreling through the woods, and we couldn't get away, so Aiden grabbed his pistol he had stolen from his dad. I didn't question it at the time, since it was the only means of protection we had beside my hunting knife. He stood out of the tent and fired a warning shot. It stunned the creature as it seemed to have never had that happen. Aiden yelled, trying to either scare it or be Mr. Badass for the two girls. It let out a deep guttural growl as it stood up on its hind legs, easily towering over Aiden. This scared us since Aiden's easily 6'2 and not a small guy. He yelled to us to run to his truck while well, it seemed focused on him. We did as he said, but I kept looking back, watching him try and scare this creature. It wasn't long before we heard another shot and a pained howl. Maggie and I only assumed Aiden shot the creature. We heard something running through the forest and prepared for the worst. Aiden busted out of the woods and yelled to get in. We piled into his truck, me crying that we were going to die. Aiden's truck wouldn't start, which worried us. Maggie screamed, and we looked where she was looking. The creature's face was pressed against the side window. Its yellow eyes pierced through our souls, as it seemed. Its breath fogged up the window. I yelled at Aiden that all he had to do was piss it off even more and shot at it. He glared at me, grumbling, and now wasn't the time to be animal lovers. The creature banged its hands on the truck window, going around the truck to find a way in. Finally, Aiden started the truck, and he floored it, startling the beast. Maggie, still freaking out, watching behind us, yelling to drive faster. It's chasing us. Aiden sped up, and I turned around to get one more look at it. I was amazed that this happened, but at the time, I was terrified. The drive home was long and tiring. We didn't speak about it anymore until a few weeks ago when I suggested we should share our story. Aiden encouraged me and Maggie protested that no one would believe us. So here it is, our encounter with the dogman of Talandega. Thank you for listening to my story. I hope nobody has to go through this, but from what I hear, many people do. This world has so many mysteries. I hope I have. No more encounters like this. Today's third encounter. I'm 21 years old, but this happened when I was a little girl. I was nine, living in Washington State. Unfortunately, I was homeless, living with my dad in the woods. But I didn't care if we had a home or not. I loved living in the forest with my dad. And we weren't poor. It's just my dad couldn't afford an apartment with the money he was making. Well, anyway, one day I went on a little hike. I never went too far when I went on my walks. I didn't want to get yelled at by my dad, if you know what I mean. I started walking. I wanted to go somewhere I never really explored by myself before. That was a stupid idea. Anyway, I was walking and just enjoying the scenery. All of a sudden, everything around me went quiet and the hairs on my body stood up. Next thing I heard was the brush next to me making noise as if someone was shaking them. I thought maybe it was a squirrel or a rabbit making the noise to ease my distress, but I took one step and I started to hear a low raspy growl. I stopped in my tracks and all the hair started standing up even more. I've never heard a growl like that before. I was too scared to breathe, too scared to make any noise. I tried to stand as still as possible, but didn't want to stick around to see what it was. 
So I started to back up slowly, but of course I stepped on a stick. I should have been paying attention to where I was going, but I was too focused on what was in the brush. As I was backing up, the thing started to move through the brush. I could see its yellow eyes staring right at me. I've never been so afraid in my life. They were glowing and it was sunny out. I could have crapped my pants, but I was thinking about turning and running. This massive dog thing jumped out of the brush. I was maybe 10 yards away from it. This thing looked like it had the body of a weightlifter. It was huge. It was black and brown with pointed ears and big, long, yellowish teeth. It had a long, brushy tail, and it stunk like death. Its head was hovering right above the ground and snarling at me. It almost looked like it was smiling. I thought I was going to die. I remember crying uncontrollably. I was so scared I was petrified. I couldn't walk or talk or even breathe. It felt like an eternity that we were staring at each other, but it was only a few seconds. The dog thing lifted its head from the ground and started to stand up. I heard its joints snap as if they'd never stood before. This thing was at least seven feet tall. I thought right then and there I was going to get torn to pieces, but thank God I heard my dad calling my name. I didn't hear him, nor did the dog thing, but then I heard him yell my name, Izzy, really loud at the top of his lungs. The dog thing looked quickly over to where my dad was calling me from. It started to growl again, then it looked back at me, showed me its teeth one last time. The dog creature then started to crawl up the tree. While it was crawling, it was growling and still staring at me. Then it disappeared into the leaves above. I began to cry again, and I ran to where my dad was. I almost collapsed when I got to him. I was pale white, and my dad asked why, what was wrong, that I didn't look so well. I told him it was nothing, that I just didn't feel good. After that experience, I was stuck by my dad all the time, and it would take me hours to fall asleep, and every noise that I would hear, I would get cold chills down my spine. I was also scared to be underneath or even around trees. I've never shared this experience with anyone. I was scared that nobody would believe me. I still have nightmares, and I'm still scared of being around trees. I have never gone into the forest alone again. Today's Fourth Encounter a few months back, one of my friends opened up to me about a creature he said he encountered a couple times in New Jersey where his mom lives. This same friend and I have had an encounter with some sort of creature in the past in New Jersey. He told me when he was a boy he saw something in the fields next to his house. Whatever he saw still terrifies him to this day. He's had two encounters with this creature, one in the middle of the day when he was a boy and one waking up in the middle of the night. Here are his encounters with the alleged dog man. These are my friend's encounters told in his perspective. I'm a heavy believer in the supernatural and in dog man and cryptids. Here are my two encounters with what I believe to be a dog man. It was a clear sunny day as I was walking alongside a trail that was close to my house. I was only about eight years old at the time. It was a beautiful day, and as a young kid, I was taking it all in. I was having an adventure, picturing myself just running through the open fields, waiting for my mom and dad to get home. The trail I was on had a beautiful scenery all around with tall grass and miles of fields to my left and dense forest to my right. I was just walking through the woods, as whenever my parents weren't home, that's what I used to do. I was enjoying the walk, taking in all the feels of nature. The smell of the woods was intoxicating, as well as the chirping birds. Then the woods fell silent. I felt like someone or something was watching me, and my eyes darted around the entire area. I then looked to my left and noticed something in the tall grass. To me, it looked like a large dog. 
but then I saw it was crouched down like a man would be if you were hiding. It was covered in brown fur, looked like it had a muzzle and ears of a German shepherd, and had eyes that were blood red. I thought it was more curious than frightening, but I was still on edge. I was scared for a bit, but I acted like I didn't notice it, and just went along with my day and ran back to the house. I never spoke about that encounter with any of my family, as they would think I was crazy, but that was my first encounter with what I believed to be a dog man. My second encounter only happened about four years ago. At this point, I lived in a different house. This house was close to a large forest and the biggest predators I've ever seen. Around here had either been coyotes or foxes. Now what I saw that night was no coyote. I woke up in the middle of the night with my throat dry and realized I was thirsty. I went to the kitchen to get some water when I felt this sudden sense of dread. I felt like I was being watched. I looked into the window close to where I was standing and to my horror saw this huge beast in my backyard. Whatever it was, it noticed me and it was staring at me with these crimson red eyes. I felt utterly terrified and to my horror I saw this animal bear its teeth and stand on its hind legs. This creature started growling and I could hear it through the window that was slightly open. I also saw its breath come out of its mouth and realized that it was real. It looked about seven to eight feet tall on its hind legs with the head of a German shepherd and the body shaped like a bodybuilder. Whatever it was, it looked back at my fence in my yard, ran to it, jumped across into the woods. I went back to my room terrified and couldn't sleep the rest of the night. These are my two encounters that have shaken me to my core and made me realize that there are creatures that science refuses to recognize. Today's final encounter. This is 100% true. I've seen a werewolf, or as some call it, the Kentucky Dogman, on several occasions. I'm 36 years old, and the first time I saw the werewolf, I was 17. I was driving from Dalton, Georgia, where my parents lived, to my grandfather's house in the small town of southwest Virginia called Pound. The town is located near the Kentucky state line. My grandfather's house is located next to a forest. The forest completely surrounds his home. It was three in the morning when I drove up the graveled road that leads to his house. Something felt odd as I drove toward the house. It was completely silent, no animal noises. Not even my grandfather's dogs were barking. The strangest thing was not even crickets were making noise. It was April. And anyone who has lived in this area will tell you that it's strange. I knew this was unusual. I had lived there with my parents till I was 11. As I got closer to the house, driving up the long driveway, I saw something strange walking down the road from the forest. At first I thought it was a man. He had on a ripped white shirt and ripped dirty brown jacket with ripped dirty blue jeans at first. He was walking normally, then the clouds moved and revealed the full moon that shined so bright you could see everything. He was covered in fur, had long nails, even on his dog or wolf-like feet. His legs were designed similar to a dog or wolf. He had a long snout, like a dog or wolf, with long sharp teeth, and was covered in blood and drool. I stopped my little aqua-colored Ford Taurus about three feet from this creature. I thought at first I had fallen asleep and was dreaming that this couldn't be real. Then, when it noticed me, it smirked at me like a psychopath. Then it leapt three times and landed on the hood of my car. I screamed and realized this was no dream, it was real. The blood and drool dripped on my windshield and it clawed at my windshield. Then this creature reached over to my window on the driver's side door and began clawing and hitting the glass. I could tell this creature wanted to hurt me or even worse, kill me. His eyes burned like fire, except they were a golden yellow colored. I panicked. I slammed the car into reverse and hit the gas, flooring the pedal to the floorboard. 
I backed up so fast and turned into my grandfather's neighbor's driveway, slammed on the brake that made the creature fall off the hood. I put it into gear and drove as fast as I could to get to Rat Creek Road. I looked in the mirror several times to see if it was still following me. So I kept driving out of South Fork towards the town of Pound. This creature wanted me and was not going to give up without a fight. The creature ran up and grabbed a hold of my bumper. I slammed on the brake and the creature hit the back windshield and rolled to the ground. I hit the gas and sped up even faster trying to get away. Then again, the creature leapt from a tree up above the road and landed on top of my car. The creature actually spoke and yelled at me to stop the car in a rough, raspy voice, like a mixture of a human and a dog. The creature growled and groaned, hitting the windshield of my car. I slammed on the brakes and the creature was flung to the ground in front of me. I hit the gas, running the creature's leg over. It let out this half-growl mixed with a scream. I thought for sure it would stop following me, but no, it was following me still. Tears were running down my face. Panic and fear were almost overwhelming. I knew at that moment that if I didn't get away from this creature, it was going to kill me. The thought terrified me to my core, so I began to pray. I pushed on the gas pedal to speed the car up even faster. I knew that on these curvy roads, these were not safe speeds to drive, but I wanted to live. I ended up speeding my car to 80 miles an hour to get away. The creature followed me almost all the way to town, but when I made it to the main road, it let out this blood-curdling howl. I went to my friend's house. Her name's Sarah. I was freaking out, crying, and panicking. It took her 30 minutes to calm me down enough to tell her what had happened. At first, she didn't believe me until I showed her the blood on my windshield and the scratches on the hood. I had actually seen and almost been attacked by a werewolf, or as people like to say in Kentucky, the dog man. I survived, and I have proof that this happened to me. I know not many people believe me when I tell them this story. It did happen. I now actually live on that same land my grandfather's house was located on. Well, folks, there it was, this middle of the night or early morning bonus. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. It is, after all, your support that keeps the channel growing and going and what gives people a chance and a place to share their experiences and theories judgment-free, just simply treated with the respect that we all deserve. Everyone, please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, friends. These creatures are real. They are out there and dangerous. Share this information with the people you care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.